Welcome to episode 6 of the Skincare Teacher Beauty Tip Show. What a beautiful weather we've had lately. We're in the middle of autumn. It is late April in Australia, so we're in the middle of autumn, but it's only the last two weeks that we've had some cooler weather. The day we reach probably 26, 28, and night we have around the 18, 20 degrees, perfect for sleeping. But what we've noticed is that people are complaining of dehydrated skin. Even I've noticed my skin was starting to dehydrate, so I've had to take action fast because dehydration is the first sign of something is not right in your skin. So you've got to keep your skin hydrated. So I introduced our serum under my day cream to hydrate the skin and I switched up my night cream to a more nourishing cream to repair the barrier so the skin is more efficient at holding onto its moisture levels. I've given myself a good exfoliation and a nice hydrating mask for the quick instant pick-me-up and the makeup just glides on and sits on beautifully. So it's made a massive difference. So if you're finding your skin is feeling a bit dehydrated with a change of season, go see your beauty therapist and ask her about the skincare you're using, whether you need to add or switch some things around to make sure that your skin is hydrated in this cooler weather. I've read an article earlier this week. A study has been conducted on 80 people on the effects of the skin of seasonal changes. And what they've discovered that as we enter into the cooler weather, the winter, the skin does in fact change as a result of the seasonal change. So the keratinocytes shrink and so the skin feels a little bit rougher and the skin is not producing as much components in it to help to repair the barrier. And this means that the skin then becomes more dehydrated because it's not holding on to the moisture. It's losing too much water through evaporation and you feel the dehydration. So the barrier needs extra help during the cooler weather. That means you need to use a good moisturizer to repair the barrier, which would include omegas, essential fatty acids, ceramides, So look for these ingredients in your skincare. But of course, not only just drinking water because you need to make the barrier effective to hold that water in the skin for longer, but you also need to start looking at your nutritional supplements, your diet. So eat foods that are high in omegas and essential fatty acids, such as nuts, seeds, and fish oils or fish, deep sea fish, that is a nice oily fish that will nourish your skin from the inside, repairs the barrier and keeps the skin nice and moisturized. Speaking about seasonal changes, as we enter the cooler weather, this is the time to rejuvenate your skin with either microdermabrasion of peels if your skin needs it. So if you have been recommended in the past microdermabrasion or peels, the cooler weather is the ideal time to do it because your skin does become a little bit thinner through exfoliation. The fresher, healthier skins from deep inside come to the surface, so you need to protect them from the environment. So summer is not the good time to do microdermabrasion of peels because it's too hot, the sun is too strong, and it can actually cause problems with the skin, such as pigmentation. The skin can become more photosensitized after it's been through a microdermabrasion treatment or a peel. This is why the cooler weather or the cooler season is the ideal time to do it. So I've decided on today's podcast, I will talk about microdermabrasion. What is microdermabrasion? What uh, or how microdermabrasion actually does and how it can improve your skin? Who would benefit from microdermabrasion treatments? And people who shouldn't do microdermabrasion treatments also. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you find it really informative. If you find it interesting and you think it can help someone, feel free to share. Welcome to the Skincare Teacher Beauty Tip Show brought to you by thebeautybusiness.com.au. In this show, you will discover skincare and beauty tips that absolutely work. I'm Yana Elston, a qualified beauty therapist, skincare educator and blogger, and in this show, I will share my expert insights into the best beauty treatments that will absolutely transform your skin. So tune in each week to learn how to look after your skin and improve various skin conditions, including acne, aging, or pigmentation. Today, 
Today I'm going to be talking about microdermabrasion. In Australia, we are right now entering into the winter season. Here in Australia, we have a very harsh, strong environment and it can really take its toll on the skin. With the rejuvenation treatments that we offer in the beauty salons, some of them include microdermabrasion, skin peels, eye peel rejuvenation, and laser rejuvenation. However, those treatments are not suitable and not advisable to do over the hot periods of summer. So as we enter into the winter period, this is the best time to do potent skin rejuvenation treatments in the clinics and in the salons, especially if you're doing a course of treatments. It's the ideal winter period when it's cooler, when the sun is not as strong, it's the ideal time to do rejuvenation treatments. Macrodermabrasion is a very popular treatment in the clinics, spas and salons, and it can be a really nice, quick and easy way to rejuvenate the skin. Microdermabrasion can be done as a standalone treatment or it can be included in a facial treatment as well. Now, there are different forms of microdermabrasion on the market and they, they all deliver pretty much the same result, but I will discuss uh, the different types of microdermabrasion. So first of all, let's talk about the benefits of microdermabrasion or what is microdermabrasion. So microdermabrasion is a treatment utilizing a machine that helps to deeply exfoliate the skin. So the kind of exfoliation you will get during a microdermabrasion is at a deeper level than what you would get by scrubs at home or in a professional setting. So when you're exfoliating your skin with a scrub, the scrubbing particles will roll over the skin and pick off dead cells. However, microdermabrasion, it's a lot more thorough because the therapist will do several passes over the skin and do it in a methodical way, making sure that all of the skin has been exfoliated. And by doing several passes, microdermabrasion will give you a much deeper exfoliation. How do people benefit with exfoliating treatments? Exfoliation removes the buildup of dead cells. Now the dead cell buildup can lead to a whole host of different problems on the skin if it is not treated. Initially, dead cell buildup will make the skin look dull, tired, it will make it look uh, a little bit gray, uneven skin tone, and it tends to exacerbate all different types of skin conditions. For example, by dead cell buildup on the skin, the skin looks spongier and thicker, so the pores look larger, wrinkles can look deeper, pigmentation looks darker. Dead cell buildup can lead to the skin looking uneven, both in texture and in color as well. If it's left untreated for too long, it can even lead to blocked pores, which can lead to blackheads, congestion, and even acne. Microdermabrasion or exfoliating techniques uh, rejuvenate the skin, smooth the texture of the skin, refine the skin, and help to even out the tone of the skin as well. So it's a fantastic way to rejuvenate the skin. Now, the different types of microdermabrasion machines on the market vary, and it's really a personal choice of what kind of microdermabrasion treatment you would prefer. I found two therapists have a preference for the type of machine they wish to work with. Perhaps the most popular one is the diamond microdermabrasion. Diamond microdermabrasion, the therapist will use a wand that has a metal attachment to it and the flat part of the attachment that rubs over the skin has been scored, has been roughened. And there is different types of attachments they use that have different degrees of coarseness to them. A little bit like sandpaper, how you can get different degrees of sandpaper. That metal tip looks a little bit similar to that. Now, the machine also uses suction. So the machine has a pump in it, and as the piece is placed over the skin, the, the handpiece, it sucks the skin into the handpiece. As the handpiece is moved over the skin, that coarseness will exfoliate that skin. So it almost like sandpapering the skin in a way. The intensity of the exfoliation can be controlled either with a suction, so how hard that skin is being pulled against the handpiece, or the coarseness of the handpiece that the therapist chooses to use. 
so they can adjust the intensity of the treatment so a delicate finer skins you know be more suitable for a light exfoliation and then you've got that oily coarse thickened skin that can go a little bit deeper with a diamond tip microdermabrasion you will find that the result is instant as in the skin feels super silky and smooth so it, it is literally frictioning off the dead cells and smoothing that skin instantly so it leaves it beautifully and silky smooth which is probably why so many people prefer diamond microdermabrasion now I've also worked with crystal microdermabrasion and crystal microdermabrasion works differently with a handpiece the machine has two different pumps one that sprays crystals in a jet onto the skin so it's a very fine jet like sandblasting the skin in a way it is like sandblasting forces the jet of crystals onto the skin and the other part of the piece will have a suction so it's sucked back into the machine into a waste container crystal microdermabrasion works by sandblasting away the dead cells rather than frictioning them off or rubbing them off now I found crystal microdermabrasion can be stronger, can go deeper, and again the therapist can adjust the flow of crystal, how hard they hit the skin, meaning how deep they can exfoliate, and the suction can be adjusted as well of, of how hard the crystals are removed. Crystal microdermabrasion typically is not done within a facial treatment. Usually it's a standalone procedure, several passes are required to, to get a really good exfoliation, and I found crystal microdermabrasion doesn't give you that instant silky result of a diamond tip however when you do a course of crystal microdermabrasion I found it gives you a more pronounced result it is more dramatic results you get and I'll talk about which skins benefit and, and how they benefit from the crystal or diamond tip microdermabrasion so I would say diamond tip is more of a, a nice light exfoliation can be done within a facial treatment whereas a crystal microdermabrasion would be more of a series of treatments used to improve our skin conditions such as acne scarring or pigmentation or uh, wrinkle reduction there is another type of microdermabrasion machine on the market probably came out in the last 10 years or so and it's called hydra microdermabrasion so it's a diamond tip microdermabrasion machine that also has a flow of water so as they exfoliating the skin with a diamond tip a flow of water is injected or sprayed onto the skin with the same tip that provides more of a cooling treatment so it is more suited for more delicate skins skins that find they have pain tolerance is a little bit low because as skin is exfoliated it helps to cool and hydrate that skin you will find that the results will pretty much be the same as a diamond tip microdermabrasion leaves your skin lovely and soft whilst you have the treatment done it doesn't feel as intensive because you've got the water spray on the skin which cools it and moisturizes it therapists that choose hydra dermabrasion or microdermabrasion typically will treat mostly clients uh, for skin rejuvenation and anti-aging to help improve hydration in the skin now who would benefit from microdermabrasion treatments most people would benefit with a good exfoliation particularly people who would benefit would be people with uneven skin tone pigmentation problems surface problems such as clogging open pores surface wrinkles dull uneven skin thicker skin grain where you need to smooth it and of course post acne scarring or even I've seen therapists treat chicken pox scars where the skin has dimpled and it needs to be smoothed out a little bit so originally microdermabrasion was invented by the doctors to treat post acne scarring but today it's more used for rejuvenation as a deep exfoliation treatment who it's not suited for would be people with fragile capillaries people with cuperose skin who sensitize very easily inflamed skin such as acne it's absolutely not suited for to treat acne in fact even if the acne is infected it may spread the infection and if the acne is inflamed we've got deep sore blind lumps it is just too strong for the skin at that particular time you could come back to microdermabrasion once the acne is settled and you want to rejuvenate the skin but at the time that skin needs more anti-inflammatory treatments so microdermabrasion is a fantastic lunchtime rejuvenating treatment you can do quick and easy however there are 
different microdermabrasion treatments available on the market. Now you find the cheaper version of microdermabrasion treatment you can buy usually are quicker. They only do say a single pass, so it would be a quick 15 minute treatment. That would be probably equivalent of a light peel or a good scrub at home. If you have a standalone microdermabrasion treatment that will give you really good results, it should be a good half an hour treatment, probably more, where the therapist will do several passes over the skin to exfoliate the skin. In that case, you will be paying more for the treatment because it takes longer to do. Microdermabrasion treatments in Australia vary between, um, I've seen it as cheap as $65, and for the good quality treatments, you're paying for about $100, $120. If you're just looking for a light rejuvenation, a quick 15 minute lunchtime microdermabrasion, fantastic. But if you're looking for long-term results and to improve a skin condition, I will opt for the more intensive microdermabrasion treatments and perhaps looking for a very well experienced therapist also that enjoys or that has good experience with microdermabrasion. Tips for getting the most out of your microdermabrasion treatment. After the microdermabrasion treatment, it's really important that you care for your skin very well. The skin can be left a little bit tight and dry afterwards. So it's really important to moisturize and protect your skin. The deeper layers of your skin has been left open and vulnerable to UV damage. So it's really, really important that you protect the skin from the sun. Stay out of the direct sun exposure for the next 48 hours. I wouldn't do any heavy exercise that causes you to sweat, makes you go red because microdermabrasion can stimulate a little bit of inflammation in the skin, which is fine because it helps to trigger the repair mechanism and healing. But if you continue that inflammation with excessive exercise or excessive heat, then it may actually then cause the skin to become sensitized. Serums are fantastic to use right after microdermabrasion because you're going to get optimum absorption of the serum into the skin, so you get the best benefits. So I I would use a serum for a minimum seven to 12, seven to 14 days, right after microdermabrasion treatment, you get the optimum results for your skin. The type of serums I'm talking about would be the hydrating serums, vitamin C serums. Stay away from anything with AHAs, BHAs right after the microdermabrasion. It might be a little bit too strong at that time, or vitamin A. And in fact, vitamin A and AHA, BHA shouldn't be used directly before microdermabrasion either because it could just make the skin a little bit too sensitive for the treatment. So do talk to your beauty therapist and ask them whether your skin is suitable for microdermabrasion treatment and what they would recommend to use before and after. Really, you want your skin in good condition. So minimum cleanse, tone, moisturize with a good quality skincare product to get your skin ready for a microdermabrasion treatment would be optimal. And then post-treatment, keep using those products and then introduce a serum to get the most out of the the results for your microdermabrasion. Now, you can do a, just a one-off treatment just for quick rejuvenation, or you can do a course of treatments. And most people would offer a course of five or six for light wrinkle reduction or smoothing of the skin, three to four treatments are fine. But typically five treatments is where you get the best results. If you're dealing with post-acne scarring, where the skin is a little bit pitted and uneven, or pigmentation, then you probably need two courses. And now what I would recommend is having a break in between microdermabrasion courses. So give your skin a break of about a month or six weeks, and then you can commence your microdermabrasion course again. And typically microdermabrasion treatments are done on a weekly basis. So you would have five or six over a period of six weeks. Thank you for listening. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast and tune in each week for the latest beauty news and trends. If you have any comments or questions, you can connect with me on my Facebook page, The Beauty Business. And for more beauty tips, read my blog, thebeautybusiness.com.au. Until next time, have a beautiful week.